In December of 2015, I picked up the keys to this new, tiny little fixer-upper for myself and my son. I'm Kelly, a single parent and DIY enthusiast. I'm pretty much creating my life as I go. Join me behind the scenes of my real life as I DIY my way through every problem I encounter. I am parked outside my local thrift shop where I am now going to take you shopping for some wool and cashmere sweaters that we can then felt down and create other crafts from. A couple of things to remember while we shop. Number one, only pick colors or styles that you like because that we're not gonna change. Two, make sure that they are dry clean only wool or cashmere. No washable blends because those won't felt correctly. Let's go. So it was a little bit picked over in there as far as wool and cashmere go, but I did get eight different sweaters that we can do something with. Next, we're going to sort the sweaters into lights and darks, wash two different loads on hot with detergent. You can throw in something like this to grab the um, dyes if you would like, not necessary, but if you're working with like really vibrant colors, that might help. And then you can see how the magic occurs. time for us to go through the felted wool sweaters and see what we got. So look how teeny this is. <laughs> this is a little cable knit one, perfectly felted, nice and dense. Um, can't wait to figure out what I'm gonna do with that one. This is that finer merino wool, which you can see it kind of got like a crepey finish to it. Um, has really cute like side pleat things. Um, I know what I wanna do with this. I'm not sure if it's thick enough. I might have to save that for a different project. Here's a little striped wool. Definitely felt it great, like evenly um, dense and good shape, maintained its shape really well. This is our cashmere one. It is so incredibly soft. Um, I think I know what I wanna do with this. It, it kind of felt it a little smaller than I had hoped, but it definitely has give left in it. So that's a possibility. This I got because it was wool and I love wool. <laughs> um, he might be destined more for mittens, booties, something along that line, because it's just not exciting. Okay, the two really thick sweaters, they, these felt perfectly. If you can find these, get them. Um, they keep their shape. They're nice and evenly dense, um, super warm. Love that rich color, <sighs> but this, I know nobody asked, but purple's my favorite color. And you wouldn't guess, right, looking around, but love some purple. Um, and this is great. It just, it shrunk like, to like me before kids size. So unless like 2021 brings me back to like a size two, I don't think I can use that for what I intended. And now this is the periwinkle one really pretty i don't know if you can see it from the distance it's got like it reminds me of easter eggs back from like the 80s when you would dip them in the oily stuff and it has like different shades of pink and purple um kind of marled together probably just looks like periwinkle to you but what i love love about this is it has these two patch pockets on the front and these little cute side vents 
which makes it absolutely perfect for our DIY project today. It's time to forget everything you've been taught about sweaters, yarn, snags, cutting, whatever, right? Because things unravel, except when you felt them. So we are going to cut off this sweater straight across under the armpits. That leaves us with this little bottom half and like a really weird shrug if you're into that sort of thing. I'm gonna be honest. Here's what, we, what I normally do with these, which we're not doing in this episode. I make them into mittens. So you take the sleeves, pull up as much as you'd like to cuff them because it's kind of nice to have that. And from there you go. I have a pattern I can use and you can actually have matching mittens out of things. I can show you some other mittens I've made before. But today's project is going to be a winter skirt, also known as an upcycled bun warmer. Anybody here go skiing? You go to those resorts, you see the girls walking around after they're off the slopes and they pull on one of those warmers. They're often made by a big name company. Um, I've priced them out, like I fell in love with this like down lined kind of quilted thing and it was like $200. I thought there is no way that I'm spending $200 on a bun warmer. So I saw in another little boutique ski shop up in Michigan, upcycled versions like this. And it's really easy because when you felt wool, it becomes fabric. See this? It's just like when you used to work with felt as a kid, it doesn't, it doesn't come undone. It's actually like a fabric. So you can cut it, you can sew it, you can add ribbons, buttons, anything that you like. But we're gonna start with this basic shape and tailor it to be a pull-on upcycled wool bun warmer. So here is Kelly from years past. She's modeling the skirt um, and you can see where it gaps here, where the waist starts to come in. And I did this like as a low rise because I mean really nobody's gonna wear this as a mom skirt, right? I'm not that far out of fashion, am I? <laughs> so we need to take this in a little bit at the waist. And there are so many ways you can do that. You can literally just flip it over and throw a button on. <laughs> you could do it that way. But I think I'm going to cut it and then sew um, up the edges on a taper like this. And then you can decide if there's anything else you wanna do. You could add um, a trim ribbon to the bottom of it, across the top of the pockets, like a tuxedo stripe down the side. You could do velvet, you could do satin. Buttons you could put on the pocket um, anywhere across the top. The only thing I would not recommend, don't put a ribbon around the waist because unless you have some other way of getting it on or you've put a you know side buttons into it to undo it, you, it won't have any give in it. So just make sure that you leave the waist stretchy enough to be a pull on. Okay, so we're going to just pin up the sides of this where it meets the body. And this will act as our guide for when we're cutting the excess fabric off. So it'll leave enough for us to uh, you know whip stitch that edge into place. So just three of them along there, that's plenty. Now these skirts at that little boutique shop, remember upcycled wool just like this, somebody purchased probably at the thrift store, were about $90. <laughs> so for my investment of $4, the time and energy to wash it, and then the, I don't know, if I was not doing this for the video, I could probably whip this together in 15, 20 minutes, you've got a really cute skirt.
Last week, I introduced Grace to you and told you she was going to help spread some holiday cheer. And the way she and her flock mates are going to do that is by giving us raw eggs. We're going to make eggnog today with fresh eggs. I'm going to put a disclaimer in here, okay? You're not supposed to eat raw eggs, but I do when they're from my own chickens in the backyard. If you're gonna do this yourself, I would highly recommend getting pasture-raised, super, super high-quality eggs to do this. Make sure they're really fresh. Um, I feel comfortable doing it with my own backyard flock because, you know, I know what they do. So, we're gonna separate six eggs. Next, after you wash your hands, we're going to beat the yolks with the sugar. So to the six egg yolks, we're going to add one cup of sugar. And mix well. Carefully add two cups of whole milk. one cup of cream. Next, we are going to whip the whites into stiff peaks. So first, let me get this poured in. And then just gently fold the whites into the yolk mixture. With alcohol in, this can last several days. Um, if you are making non-alcoholic raw eggnog, you need to consume it um, same day. When it reaches a semi-uniform consistency, I don't mind having a couple of these egg white fluffies in there. Um, then you can just ladle it into a glass. And then top with some freshly grated nutmeg. Happy New Year. Eggnog isn't just for New Year's Eve. Indulge in a delicious eggnog latte to start your New Year's Day right. So for our first Ask Me Anything segment, I had questions from viewers about my jobs and some of my most embarrassing moments. And I, I thought, you know what, let me brainstorm a little bit. And I came up with a list that was way too long um, for both. Like, I think at some point I should have just segments that say things I've done for money or um, things I've done even not for money that were work. Um, great, great fodder there for lots and lots of conversations. And then I looked at the embarrassing list and there are some definite themes there. Lots of lost tops. I, I don't know what it is with me and losing tops, but... Um, that was a theme. And another theme in it was drugs. So I thought, you know what, because there's an intersection between one of these crazy jobs I had and an embarrassing moment, that's what you're going to get today. You might be saying to yourself, it looks like she's turned over a new leaf with fashion, but this is actually how I used to dress when I worked as a substitute teacher at the high school. As you can see, I did hair, I did makeup, I wore a wool blend overcoat and I accessorized. So there I was one day teaching Huck Finn to a group of high school juniors. I'd accepted a six week substitute teaching position at the local high school. There was an overhead page and the administration said, teachers, please keep your children in the classrooms. 
we are conducting, I don't know if they called it a drug sweep. I don't know what they called it, but they called it something and said, basically, keep the kids in. Of course, these juniors raced to the window, looked down, said, hey, there, there are cops everywhere. Uh, they're doing a drug sweep. Okay. So I sat there and taught. The class ended, the bell rang, and the kids went to get up. And I said, you can't leave. You know, they said, Not, don't, don't release your kids till they're all clear. Okay. So they're like, no, 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 they'll let us go. I said, no, 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 just wait. And sure enough, they came on over the overhead and said, teachers, do not release these kids. And the kids were like, this is crazy. Like, this never takes this long when they do this. Well, turns out it took forever. And finally, there was a knock at the door. It was the principal of the school. And he said to me, hey, can I have you gather up your things? Um, I need to talk to you outside. And my heart sunk because I thought, I'm getting notified that something happened, like something really serious happened to someone in my family. No, that is, that is not at all what happened. As we made our way into the hallway, the principal then says to me, so the police dogs alerted on your vehicle. The drug sniffing police dogs alerted on your vehicle. Now, for those of you who have known me my whole life, <laughs> this is comical, right? I mean, I've never even smoked a cigarette. Like the thought of me doing drugs, having anything to do with drugs is laughable. Not to mention the fact that I'm a licensed nurse. So I, I must have had the most puzzled look and he said, don't worry, we'll go ahead and have you drive your vehicle off campus. So like they can arrest me, but not in front of the students that I've been teaching, <laughs> I don't know. And I am insisting, I said, listen, you can search my vehicle here on the lot. You, you don't, I'm not taking it off the lot. Like there are no drugs in my car, like you can do it. Sure enough, they bring in the police dogs and they are tearing that vehicle apart. Um, of course, they found nothing, but um, it was a lesson and it was really embarrassing. And it wasn't embarrassing because I was worried about anybody finding drugs in my car. It was embarrassing because they actually believed that they were going to find drugs in my car. So now it's the police who are looking as bewildered as I was when I was taken out of the classroom to basically get arrested. <laughs> and I was offered the rest of the day off with pay. Administration apologized to me profusely. And I'm like, no, I'm good. Because at this point, I am the coolest substitute in the entire district. You've seen them on Pinterest. Stay tuned next week for our DIY segment where I show you how to handcraft needle felted wool figures just like these with just a few tools and supplies. Stop. Go lay down. No. Oh, no. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you're not supposed to count your chickens before they hatch, but you know, after they hatch, it's all fair game. So compliments of Grace and her friends in the chicken coop, we are going to make fresh eggnog at home today. We're gonna to start with six eggs, separating them. Well, that went to That's a no. Hey, Jenny, come here. Wishing you all the best for 2021. If I'm keeping you entertained, please subscribe, share, and tell your friends.